Hello mortals. Remember that one time when you found those funny looking mushrooms growing by the road so you decide to eat them? And reality ceased to exist for a couple of hours. Or when you've been working on making a video without sleeping for two days because you've procrastinated and did nothing in the past two weeks, and now your cat starts telling you to go to sleep. In both of these situations, your brain is experiencing what some call, hallucinations. But what if, your consciousness, and therefore your experience of reality is a hallucination as well? Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. So, what are you? The entity that I'm speaking to right now. You are a body. Or maybe, more specifically, you are your brain. After all, the brain processes all the information it has, it is the seat of all intelligence and emotions. But it is only a 1.3 kilograms lump of flesh, that is locked inside a skull without any light, sounds, or tactile feelings. But anger someone hard enough and that last one could have an exception. So then, the brain receives all the external information through several fragile wires, and generates an image of the reality outside of the skull. And this is where you appear. You are the consciousness generated by the brain which is fed that image of reality that you experience right now. But why does the brain even create the consciousness? Is it taking any decisions, or is it only an observer, and by it, I mean you, the consciousness that I'm speaking to right now? Of course you might say that you are the one in control of taking every decision. But is that really so? Your brain is a very complex biological computer, but as every computer, its workings can be broken down into a lot of if-then statements. If thirsty, then drink water. If thirsty and danger ahead, then wait until danger goes away. All the decisions you make, regardless of how complex they are, can be broken down into millions of primitive such statements that are automatically processed by your brain and don't require conscious effort. Some research into the neuroscience of free will shows that decisions are made a split moment before you become aware that you have made the decision. So to sum it up, the brain works ahead of your consciousness, leaving you only as an observer. But then why is the purpose of such an observer? If the brain works fine by itself, why does it generate an observer to be aware of what is happening? Some scientists consider the existence of consciousness an evolutionary byproduct of the advanced brain. It might have evolved by accident, and since it does not pose any disadvantages for an organism's survival, it stuck along and didn't die off through evolution. On a related note, the human brain doesn't work by itself, the conscious perception is heavily affected by the state of the body that it inhabits, and not only. There are quite a few things you can do to improve the efficiency of your brain. In Brain Rules, the molecular biologist John Medina lists 12 rules to follow in order to maximize your brain efficiency at absorbing new information in school, university, and just everyday life. And the best thing is, you can get these 12 principles summarized in a 15-minute read on Blinkist, our today's sponsor. Hurry up and grab the free one-week trial, and get the most crucial ideas from over 3,000 non-fiction books on a huge range of topics like science, investments, health, and literally anything else. Spend 15 minutes every day reading or listening to the summary of one book instead of watching memes, and your brain will be thankful to you in the long run. The first 100 of you to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out, and you'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. The link is in the description below. Now back to our topic. Most scientists think of the consciousness of different organisms as a gradient. Humans can objectively be considered as the most conscious beings on Earth, while a microorganism's awareness might even be non-existent. There seems to be a correlation between the complexity of one's brain and the level of awareness of the organism. Who knows how incredibly advanced aliens could experience reality with their elevated consciousness. They most certainly don't exterminate each other for laughably stupid reasons. Maybe that is the fate that awaits you as well, after augmenting your brain with technology in the near future. You will probably live to see it. One interesting topic we didn't touch is how does consciousness die? If you step into a teleporter, and your body gets disassembled and perfectly reassembled in another place, what happens to your awareness? As we know, consciousness emerges from the brain, and if the brain ceases to exist in one place, so will that awareness. The newly reconstructed one would just be a copy, 
having the memory of stepping inside the teleporter and now being on the other side. But the original you disappeared. You unknowingly committed suicide. That's what's called continuous consciousness, it exists as long as there are no gaps in between. And now here's a scary realization. You don't need to step inside a teleporter to create a gap of consciousness, you can also go into a coma or be put under general anesthetics. During that period, your brain is fully unconscious, and after that, a new consciousness wakes up, unaware that the old one ended. Yeah, sometimes it's best not to think about this stuff a lot, and next time you go to sleep, try to ignore the possibility that you are but one of the thousands of consciousnesses that emerged from your brain the morning you woke up and died the following night.